What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Now, I said I wasn't going to do this for a while, but I did. Tonight, I happen to have a box. This is a Tackle Warehouse box. Maybe I had a few too many adult beverages one night, got on here looking for one bag of hooks, and ended up with the whole box. I'm sure you can relate. See, this is what happens when you're in Iowa in the winter. You can't go out and fish after work. Days are too short. You can go ice fishing on the weekend, but that hasn't worked out the past few weekends for me since we finally got safe ice. So what do you do? You, you look at lures. Oh, well, let's take uh, said items out of this box. I'll show you what I got, and we'll talk about it, and uh, do an unboxing. So enough yapping. Let's start looking. All right, where should we start? Well, I think we're going to start with the uh, the lures that I'm most excited to throw this year, and that's some frogs. So that's the pad perch. The popping perch was honestly my favorite frog that I used last year. Caught some really good fish on it. This is the pad perch. So same design, same concept, and this is one of the colors that got me a ton of good fish last year. I caught a five on this color. Happens to be the natural gold. So good looking color. I like that. It mimics a, you know, a number of things where it's kind of broken up, goldish. It's kind of got that bluegill profile and look to it. It's got the same tail as the popping perch has, but you'll notice on the front of it, it's not a popping style. So it's just a regular, you know, pointy nose type frog. This is the bottom of it too. That's one thing I like about these. It's not a flat color. Looking up, it looks just like a fish that has a, a black goiter on it. But still pretty close to a fish. Now, I see they've changed these. I wonder, I've got a popping perch over there. Let me look at one. And here is said popping perch. And I couldn't remember if they had a deal there on the bottom. It appears they do, so that must be something that Strike King does. To help that water from getting up in where the hook enters the body, I know that can be a little bit of an issue with some of them. But this one, you can see the hole there to make the frog peas in the back. Same thing on this one when you drain the water out and squirt the water out, the hole's there. So interested to try that out. That's the two next to each other size. Everything looks to be exactly the same, except instead of it being a popping style, it's that pointed nose. And this is what do they call hack attack, the hack attack pad perch. Interesting. Next frog that we have is the scum frog. Now, I have the trophy series, and honestly, this was probably the frog that surprised me the most last year because these are not very expensive. I think like five, six dollars for, you know, their, their top line. I want to say six something maybe um, for this pro series. And I think this is kind of like the best level of frog that they have. So let's see. I should go grab the trophy series. Let me grab that. I should have got all this ready. Debo, get your act together. Okay, I had to search through a bunch of stuff, but I finally found it. This is the trophy series. So this is the frog I was most surprised by last year. Now you can see the eye fell off. The eyes on these are not high quality or anything. It's just kind of a, a sticker deal that they've got on. That one's already coming off. But the thing that's really nice and interesting about these is you remember how I said that the, uh, let me just grab it. The pad perch has this hole blocked. They've done the opposite concept here. Scum frog has a, a larger hole with a larger weight in the back. So this frog, this is the water. The frog sits like this up in the water. And as you pop it, it goes and then kind of sits almost straight back up. So you never have to worry about, you know, squeezing the water out of the frog, making it pee. A lot of people say the weight sits like this and it's actually pretty nice. Now the, the hook points are up, which I like. It's got a very good solid hook on it. Same thing here. I see the hooks are up and I did notice that these do come with owner hooks. Very good hooks. I like that. Now I noticed the eyes on these are a 3D eye like you put on a, a crankbait. The thing I thought was interesting is it's got a split ring on there. I don't know about that. I've never used a split ring on any sort of frog ever. So that seemed uh, kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe there's a method to that madness. But some bright chartreuse and black legs there. Those legs I'll probably trim up. I like them to be just about the, the size of the body, maybe even a little bit shorter. But I like the bottom of it because it was a green pumpkin, something you don't see a lot in frogs. And it's got some black flake in it. So we'll see how that does. Oh, that's interesting. Now on this one, they have like a tube in there. It's like a hard tube. Hmm. And when you cast it, that's the other cool thing. I forgot to mention that. When you cast it with that big hole and all that water goes out of there usually as you cast on the back and throw it. So I was happy with this frog. So I got this one to try. We'll see how they do. Scum Frog Pro Series. Next frog. Now, all the hype aside, I don't get into the pros and cons and all this stuff. I just like to use the lures for what they are. This is a Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. I got it because I've had a number of people have asked about it. I'm happy to give you my honest opinion on them. Honest opinion on this, getting it out. The body's kind of hard. It's not a real soft body. Seems okay, though. I'm, I'm not sure. I have to try that out. Hooks seem good and sharp on it. Hooks are very good and stout on it as well. Now, I noticed um, just looking through the package at this, they have some heat shrinked tubing on there. Um, I noticed that was something that 13 fishing, that was the first time I had saw something like that to kind of close that hole up. So again, weight in the back, kind of all normal body style, nothing too crazy. This almost reminds me of, uh, I think it's like a Weston or a Terminator frog I have like this where the, the body's just almost a little harder rubber. It's not crazy hard, but 
a little bit different than you know something like this this stuff is really 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 soft so I don't know we'll see how that is I like they do have the, the legs trimmed up so you can tell it's people that use frogs did have a say in this the Guggen filthy frog and I got this in the bullfrog color I like again that that bottom is kind of a broken up color not just a solid black or white I've been trying these a little bit more so we'll see how that one does uh two more frogs okay so for the people that say they always have trouble getting a you know a frog to actually stick where you know the the fish hits it but they can't actually get the hook set on it one thing I'll say is well maybe try downsizing to a little bit smaller frog I've done that in the past with some success now I got this one because it's just kind of a weird color I want to try some weird stuff like this okay now right away I noticed the body on this is kind of stiff See how it kind of takes a minute to go back. Kind of a harder rubber. We'll see how that does. Now the hook points are pointed up, and that's something I like to see. Hmm, interesting. Now the bottom of it, kind of cool. You can see the legs kind of tucked there. Again, it's got kind of a broken up pattern, a little bit different colors. Legs are a little bit brighter, not necessarily to mimic anything that these fish should be eating. Actually kind of some bluegillish colors, but a little bit different. I wanted to get it to try it. This is the Baby Sexy Frog from Strike King. So it's a very small version. Just to compare it to that Guggen frog, you can see the size difference there. A lot smaller little frog, smaller profile, easier for fish to get. A lot of times it's just smaller fish that are, you know, popping at that frog and not necessarily committing. But I have noticed success in dropping down to a smaller frog. So this dude's really small. Does it say the weight? Eh, I don't know the weight, but it's a small frog. We're going to try it. Baby Strike King. All right, last and final frog that's in here. This is the Savage Gear. This is the Hopwalker frog. It's a newer one that's out. You can see there, two and a quarter inch, half ounce. So pretty standard, I think, for a frog. I got the all black in this one. I do enjoy an all black frog. Now look at that. That body is extremely soft, collapses easy. Hooks do sort of point up. Now they're not razor sharp. Okay, that's one thing I don't like about those. Those hooks are not crazy sharp. I'll probably have to sharpen those. Hmm, that's kind of disappointing, but legs i will trim those up pretty normal legs the bottom nothing crazy about that it's a pretty normal looking frog i'm not seeing anything crazy different about this i don't know if they say anything that's different with it hand painted details that doesn't really matter on a black frog so it'll be interesting to see how well this walks but yeah that's kind of disappointing that one's that one's sharp but this one like i shouldn't be able to do that with my finger on a hook i, I don't know i'll leave the judging until i actually get to try it savage gear hop walker Moving on to something different that I've just honestly never used. This stuff is called Quick Coat Lure Dip. Now this stuff you're able to actually dip blades of stuff in, metal, so if you have hooks, you can dip those in red, blades, and you can even dip your lures in it. So I thought this would just something be kind of cool. You know, it's kind of like the spike it that I use to turn stuff chartreuse. This is a red color, but you can dip this stuff in anything and it dries in seconds. So I don't know, I figured I'd try it. It's red, maybe uh, dye some hooks to kind of give that bleeding effect i know some people are big into that some people say it makes zero difference i don't know i thought it was interesting we're gonna try it quick coat lure dip okay the next three things all kind of go together so i wanted to try making some of my own chatterbaits i've seen people do that there's a few things i got online so first i want to try out some of the beast coast skirts that they have so this is chartreuse special and this is dirty money Beast Coast honestly makes some of the best jigs, some of the best swimmers, you know, the Miyagi, some of the best stuff on the market, in my opinion. It, it is a little bit more expensive than some things, but I believe it is one of the cases where you do get what you pay for. Now, that's not always the truth. You know, just because something's more expensive doesn't mean it's always going to be better than something less expensive. But Beast Coast, they've got great quality control on their stuff. I've had really good luck with their jigs, their swim jigs. And I thought these skirts looked pretty awesome. Now, you can see there they put in there, you know, that... Stuff that you don't really see in a lot of the jigs, that tinsel stuff. They're just very bright. They look good. I saw that skirt and I thought, man, that would look pretty sweet on a chatterbait. So I got these to try out. We'll try out this Dirty Money too, just to see what it looks like. Look at that. Looks really cool in the water. Gives off a good reflective flash. So I got the skirts. The next part I needed was some jigs. I found these. I've never heard of these before. These are Boss Outdoors. The reason I like these and kind of my method to the madness was I wanted to make a chatterbait that was going to be pretty weedless because... Let's face it, the chatterbait stinks around wood. I get it stuck in wood all the time. So I went with something that was more of a flipping hook. So you can see there, a short shank on it. You know, not a very long shank at all to help you from getting snagged in the wood. Super sharp hook. I like that. Oh, must add ultra point. That's why. Okay. Super sharp hook. The uh, the weed garb seems to be pretty standard. Nothing crazy and, and over the top, but I like the head on it. Now I needed a head that fit this way because that's going to go onto a split ring onto here. So we're going to put one of these together real quick just to show you what it looks like. Okay, step one is going to be put split ring on the blade. Put it in the bottom hole of the blade like so. Little twisty twist magic. 
And there you have it. First step done. Split ring is on the bottom of that. Next, I'm just going to rig this up. Uh, let's see. We're going to go long and forward to make sure that skirt flows like that. So I'm going to put this on. Hook point through the skirt. Feed the skirt up over the soft plastic keeper. Push that skirt up over that skirt keeper. There it is. Boy, that's super easy. So that's what our jig's going to look like there. I can trim that down. I like that color a lot. Going after that bluegill look. Green pumpkin blade. Green pumpkin here. I'm digging it. Next, we got to undo our snap or clip or whatever the heck you call it. And let's see, I'm going to want it to fit this way. All right, I had to stop for a second. I had to close that gap just a little bit where you close that snap. So I'm going to go on the bottom, give myself just enough room to poke that back through the top, just like so from the backside, like that. And that's all I need to do on that part. I'm going to close my snap, like so. There we go. Chatterbaits together. That's where I'm going to tie it to it. All right, so I'm going to open that snap up, put that through this part. Whoa, as long as I don't jab my finger. All right, and there we have it, my own first homemade chatterbait. We'll see how that does. I scratched a little bit there putting the split ring on, but there it is. Interesting. So it just kind of gives you a way to make your own if you want to try that. I've never done it. I figured I'd get some to try it. We'll see how weedless this actually is. I figured it was kind of a different look. Smaller shank hook. It does have that weed guard to help it, so maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to throw a chatterbait around a little bit more wood and not lose it on the first cast because I tend to do that. Now jigs like this are also really nice if you want to try to do some naked jigs. So instead of a, uh, you know, a jig with the skirt on it, just put your own favorite beaver or craw or whatever you want on here and fish it just like you would a jig or a Texas rig. You kind of get the both worlds. You get that soft plastic and you get that jig head. I know some people like that for a little bit better. Hookup ratio, the weed guard, you know, just depends, but gives you some options. So these are the Culprit and Credit Craws. These are kind of neat. I had never uh, never seen these. I don't know how new these are, but check these things out. Pretty neat looking. I like how they're nice and slender. You can almost use those, you know, to punch. They should come down through grass really well. Does have some action, kind of those kicking claws on the back, but they're not tiny thin. I notice a lot of them are like this, this real tiny thin all the way up. These have some girth to it. It's a little bit thicker there where it connects to the front of the craw got some girth there if you didn't want them to you know flap you could just snip those off and you'd essentially have four little crawl deals up front like that so pretty beefy body so I mean this is a perfect example if you wanted to you could throw this on the front of a jig like that you could rock a naked jig pretty cool looking little profile there this might be a little bit big but you know Texas rig that baby you could Carolina rig that if you wanted to it'd probably also work on a scrounger head type thing not a scrounger head I'm sorry a wobble head you know it looks like kind of a jig up front that's disjointed Put it on there and you just kind of crawl that through the rocks kind of gives it a cool different look but there we go culprit and credit craw that's the four inch that's just the regular green pumpkin i also got some of the three and a half inch in a color that i like this is a bama bug it's got like the green pumpkin on the bottom there but on the top is that kind of natural june bug black and purple flake there's the two next to each other so that three and a half inch i think could probably be a lot better on this oh yeah that look cool Fish that as a naked jig. You can use these as jig trailers. I am actually got them for a Texas rig, throwing them around grass. I think that'll have some cool action on it. Bunch of moving appendages, the little legs there. Pretty cool. So there it is. The culprit and credit craw. Never seen them before. Okay, you're going to notice a theme with these last few. So the first one I got, this is the Savage Gear Shine Glider. Now, I have the smaller version of this. I forget what it is, like the 4-inch or something like that. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I felt like it was kind of light, didn't really want to cast well. So I wanted to get this larger one. Um, this is one I watched a Ben Nowak video. He had one out last year. I think he had like the bone colored one, but he did great on it. And I kind of commented back and forth with him. And he's a dude that has a highly underrated channel. Ben Nowak should have a bajillion more subscribers than he have. He and Alex Rudd both. Both of those guys know so much. They're nice dudes. Their following should be up over 100,000 for both of them each. But this is something I watched him. He had good luck on it. I don't have a lot of uh, faith in swim baits. This is going to be a whole other video. I, I talk about my, my swim bait setup or glide bait setup, you know, these larger ones. Kind of my theory on it, why I haven't been good with them. Um, but it's this year to change it. A lot of people say they want to see me throw larger swim baits, so we're going to throw them. Let's see here. So there we go. So this is just a single jointed glide bait. It's got a rubber tail. Some big, looks probably a number one hooks on there. Seven inch, two and a quarter ounce. Yeah, number one hooks runs one to two meters down. So this is a slow sink. I like that. Kind of the bright colors. I wanted something kind of a little brighter, flashier. I don't have anything like this. Moves well. The whole bait overall looks pretty nice. Heavier. I think this will do a little bit better casting, especially on that 
larger line. So there it is, the Shine Glider. Interested to try that one. Next up, okay, I have a couple from G-Rat. If you haven't heard of G-Rat, they make some really cool swim baits. I have the Sneaky Pete, which is the larger version of this. I forget the size on it, gosh darn it. I wish I had it next to it to compare, but this is the Pistol Pete. So this is the little brother or sister, however you want to look at it. Yeah, ouch, those hooks are sharp. There it is, this dude's little guy. Look at him compared to that Shine Glider. Makes this looks like a little minnow. I think this color was what? New trout? Baby trout? Baby trout, yeah. This is just kind of a smaller one. This is one, you know, it's not a real big, huge, crazy, what's it, I think like an ounce? 5.75 inches, 1.2 ounces. So this is something you could throw on, you know, just your medium heavy even. This is a pretty small bait. I'm interested. I'm interested to see how this will do. Is this going to be kind of like a gateway swim bait? You know, not something crazy huge, but not just a little, you know, three inch Kitek. Wow, those sharps. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Those hooks are sharp. Now, one thing I really like about the G-Rat stuff is you see there the hook deal swivels here. So if you get a fish on here, you know, one thing that I've heard a lot with larger swim baits is that fish will get hooked. They'll head thrash, and if this can't move, gives leverage to pop that hook up. But this, it doesn't matter how they go. You can see there, this just keeps swiveling around with those swivels in there. So front and back, I like that. I'm excited to try that. That is the little... Pistol Pete by G-Rat Baits. Sticking with that because I was such a fan of the first G-Rat that I got. They seem like some pretty cool dudes. I wanted to try this. This is the Wild Willie. Now this is on the larger size and I actually thought this might be pretty awesome for some pike. Look at that color. Speaking of pike, that was the color I got here. It's like pike or baby pike, pike fry. I don't remember something like that, but it just says pike. Those hooks are super duper sharp. This is a walking bait. So this is a big, large topwater walking bait. I thought pike, I thought musky should do pretty well for it. It's a six inch, two ounce walking bait. I'm excited to try this out. Can I find some musky, some northern, maybe a monster bass on it? Like the pattern, it's kind of, you know, just the regular fish scale pattern. They've done some white, silver, green. It's funny now that I've started painting my baits, I pay much closer attention to the paint jobs and such on baits. Six inch, two ounce, wild willy, topwater walking bait. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, next up, another Savage Gear. This is the Pulse Tail Shiner LB, as in hopefully catching large LB ears. Now this thing came all together. I was going to pick up a couple of these, a couple different colors, a couple different sizes. This is the larger 5 inch. This is in the hitch. I wanted to uh, try some of the smaller ones too. I saw they had their own hooks for these. I didn't know what size to get. It didn't really say on the deal. I didn't know it already came pre-rigged with the hook in it. I would have grabbed a couple more, but you can see they're kind of a shiny metallic flesh inside now that whoa look at that hook that is a beefy hook definitely gonna have to throw this on a heavy power rod to make sure that hook penetrates wow a thing i like about it is it kind of slides back down in there and it's got the top and these fins to help make it a little bit more weedless but wow look at that hook that is an insane heavy wire hook cool colors on it it's got kind of that huddleston type you know blocky club looking tail be interested to see how this does overall it's not crazy soft so We'll see what kind of action that's going to give it. I honestly don't know. That's the five inch pulse tail shiner. I got that in the hitch color. It's got a belly weight there. Hopefully it'll slide over a lot of stuff and not get stuck from the bank, which is why I honestly get scared of throwing these. All right, next, it's something that's not new. It's something that a lot of people have talked about and it's something that folks say is one of the absolute best swim baits on the market. If you want to get in the swim bait game, you want to catch fish, this is what you go with. So I got one. This is the six inch slow sinking gizzard bull shad. There it is. And I'll tell you what, this thing does look super duper cool. One, two, three, four, four piece swim bait. And these are pretty cool because, you know, when you go through the water like that, that's what it's doing is that regular fish motion. Like hair or brush looking type tail on it, you know, to kind of give it a different look, different feel. But man, this does look just like a shad. Perfect shad profile. I like the paint on it. It's got some iridescent paint to it. Pretty cool, and I've heard you fish these a little bit faster than you would think. Kind of burn it, make it look like a shad running. I'm excited to try this. Comment below and let me know if you all have tried this, the bull shad, or any of these others yet. A lot of these are pretty new, but some of these just like this one are supposed to be old classics. So, again, that is the bull shad. Oh, that's the Generation 2. Don't know how much of a difference that makes, but Gen 2 bull shad. Looks cool. All right, only a couple more things left in here. So, this is the Six Sense Hybrid Swim Crank. Um, another thing that I want to work on this year, and I'm going to talk about that more in a future video, is wake baits, wake rats, those sorts of things. I really honestly don't throw waking style crank baits or swim baits, so that's why I grabbed this. Pretty cool looking little bait. One thing I've noticed, you know, the six cent stuff does cost a little more, but as far as the paint job goes, 
a lot of this looks like you know the custom paint jobs that you see people doing on crankbaits. You can see they've got a few different colors faded. It's got the iridescent purple in the belly there you can see. Iridescent kind of a pearlish blue and gold different colors on top. Their paint schemes are awesome. Six cents makes some of the prettiest cranks out there I think on the market. It's got a good feathered treble with good sharp hooks on it. I don't know what hooks they use. I don't know. They're good and sharp. Now, this is a 5 8 ounce lure. It's floating and it swims with a tight swim bait style. So it's going to swim with a, you know, a tight wobble to it. Now, you can see how that bill is almost straight up and down. That's tall tail sign that you've got a wake bait. So it's not going to dive. You know, this, this bill isn't like this. It's not going to dive down. It's going to go just under the surface or at the surface, probably depending on how fast you crank it. You've got a little wake bait there. So not very big, small dude. Again, six cents hybrid swim crank. Okay, two things left. Oh crud, I forgot I got these. The heck? Apparently they gave me the bag that somebody ripped into. <laughs> How many are supposed to be in here? Did they take some out of this? I think I need to do a quick quality check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, all eight are in there, okay. Well, I got these for the drop shot. This is a company I hadn't heard of before, Venture Lures. Explore, cast, catch. I like to do all those things. It's so a 3.75 inch finesse worm. I specifically got it to use on some drop shots. The green pumpkin crack, eight pack. Pretty neat looking. I'm still working to improve my drop shot game and I thought these looked pretty neat. I saw them, kind of a last minute deal. I wanted to pick them up and try them. I don't know, we'll see how they do. Drop shotting with uh, the finesse worm from Venture Lures. That's embarrassing. I stopped that before I opened this. I was, I was talking for a while to myself. Anyway, I was saying this was the bait sanity. They get an A for effort. It's plastic inside of plastic inside a box. The Antidote Glide. This one happens to be 2.6 ounces, seven and a half inches long. Warning, it does have extremely sharp hooks as that scientist in the test tube built this bait sanity thing. Funny. They say it glides side to side with a seductive S action that trophy sized bass can't resist. And heck, I need all the help I can get in my trophy sized bass catching category because I haven't caught any trophy size. So we're gonna use this. It's got a soft rubber tail on it. It's just one joint in the middle. Moves very freely, I like that. Large scale pattern, I got it in, they call it the bread color, but it's almost like the bone, that whitish, yellowish look. I've heard a number of swim bait guys say this color does really well. It just kind of gets attention. Just kind of an all around good color. So that's what I got. This is the super slow sink. I got that for fishing from the bank. I don't want it to throw out and go way down into the tree the first time I use it. So I got the super slow sinking version. Can run it on top i can let it sink down a little bit before i start slow cranking it but glide baits are something that i want to try to catch more fish on this year so i picked up the antidote from bait sanity let me know let me know if you use this one i've heard a lot of buzz around it a lot of people say it's supposed to be a really good value bargain first time swim bait purchase person deal i think this was like 30 bucks so pretty reasonable for a swim bait heck there's swim baits out there that are you know 70 80 100 dollars we're gonna give this one a try, the bait sanity. Double check, all right, that's all in the box. Let's go uh, Let's go sign out. All right, fishing friends, that's gonna do it for tonight. The theme was, yeah, some swim baits, something that I wanna work this year. And the frogs, because, well, I love frogs, and I'm addicted to them, so we're gonna keep throwing those this year, but that's it for tonight. Now, tonight I wanted to focus on getting some stuff that I was stocking up for, for spring. Now, comment below and let me know, what are you stocking up on? What are you really looking forward to fishing this spring? You know, swim baits, jigs, whatever it is, comment below and let me know, but, Tonight's subscribe fishing friend shout out goes to my man Russell over at RWA Fishing. Not only is he a subscribe fishing friend, but he has a channel of his own. So if you get a chance, I'll link it down below. Russell over at RWA Fishing, one of the nicest dudes I know. He always comments on all my videos and watches. So Russell, thank you very much. I appreciate you and everybody else out there. I appreciate you all watching these, supporting the channel. Of course, you can't tell, but it's midnight. It's late. I got to get to bed. So thank you all for watching and until next time.